last one always. James Wright had been making his way as a dead actor for some years before a recent appearance on a popular interview show propelled him into the conscience of mainstream celebrity. We followed him to find out about his life, playing dead. I mean, after my appearance went viral, things escalated really quickly. Uh, my agent was filling calls from TV, film, magazines, all wanting a piece of me, you know. Um, can't lie, it's, it's been pretty hectic, but uh, say to me. <laughs> I mean, all these celebrity parties and functions are great, but I'm really chomping at the bit to get back on set. I mean, to us, Andrew and myself, the, um, the next step is really... James is keen to overcome bumps in the road in his efforts to break down walls. I don't want to be typecast, I want to play living characters. You know, people are always asking, is there life after death? And I want to be able to say, yes, yes there is. Today, James has travelled to London to meet with his agent. Sharon Dart runs Sharon Dart, an agency for specialist actors based in London's trendy Soho. It's a dead exciting time for our James, it is. You know, I've been doing this a long time, you know, and he, he is just on the edge of tearing this industry apart. And why do you think James is suddenly crossing into the mainstream? Well, it's dead simple, that is, yeah. It's talent. Young people in particular, they want something fresh. Great, great, that's enough. I think he's a really great actor, but I'd really love to see him have his own chat show. You know, really, he's a cross between Graham Norton and Oprah, you know. And both of them have had their prejudice to overcome. Graham was Irish, Oprah was black. Well, they still are, you know. And that's what's great about them. They've not changed. You know, all my clients have had their challenges to overcome. I've got a couple of blind ones, and it's not necessarily easy for them, because when they're filming, they're not going to see their marks. We've rushed off our feet, love, you know. People say sex sells, but in my experience, if you really want to sell a person, they'd better be unique. Everybody has sex, not everybody has a guide dog. James's lifelong friend and manager, Andrew, has recently become concerned that Sharon and James's ambitions might be out of alignment, and then he's not getting the respect he deserves. I haven't seen Sharon for a while. How are you feeling about meeting her? Good. Yes, good. No, I, th I think it's, you know, it's time to start realigning what we're doing. You know, what are we out to do here? I got um, the number for Brad's personal trainer. I thought maybe we could stop some of the rot with a couple of intensive sessions. Yes, that's not a bad idea. Good, I'll give him a call. Yes, no, that's a fabulous idea. So it's Brad Pitt, his personal trainer gave, gave us his number. Yes, Brad and I became quite, quite close on, on the set of World War Z. He's a really lovely guy. Yes. There must have been quite a few. Uh, uh, well, actually, to yourself. I did a lot of the work, and a lot of the others were CGI'd. Yeah. So a lot of the close-up work was me, um, and you know we were talking about makeup. They just made me look I different. I didn't uh, see your credit come up at the end. Well, no, it is there. Uh, often with motion capture stuff, they um, they don't credit all of the actors because, um, well, it's a lot of names to add on at the end. We um, we have been in discussions about that. Yes, but Brad and I were very close, and Angie, of course, she was at the set all the time. <laughs> It's a wonder he can get any work done, you know, with those children of his. They're lovely, lovely kids. You get on well with them? Yes, you know, I've always loved children. I've always loved the kids. So, um, oh yeah, you know, we were like one big happy family, weren't we? Yeah. When they stopped crying, it was... Yes, no, I mean, they did, they did, they did interfere with shooting quite a lot, if I'm honest, but, um, yeah. Okay, how can I help you? Um, just to touch base, see what's 
see what's happening. It's your favourite. Thank you, Charlotte. All right, so um, Bloomsbury have been back onto me about your book. Um, they're still keen to cover your pre-animated life. Right, see, I'm really quite keen to stick to post-mortem on yeah, that. Yeah, I said that to them, and they're going to come back to me. The guys on uh, MasterChef and I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here have been in touch, but I really wasn't sure. Yeah, I, I suppose the concern there is, you know, after the PR disaster of being featured in Heat's Body Shockers of the Week, do I want to open my body up to that kind of scrutiny? You know, do I want people obsessing over what I'm eating? Um, do I want people to look at me and think, you know, kangaroo anus? I thought that. With work and endorsement oh. offers flooding in, it's critical for James to make the right choices to capitalise on his new high profile, whilst being careful not to oversaturate the market. We've had a call from Game of Thrones. They love you, babe. Oh, well, okay. Um, this is a big one. Um, okay. What's the role? Right, well, nothing is set in stone, but it's to play a White Walker. Stay with me. It's a recurring character, yeah? And it's the main walker for the next two series. Right, okay, well, um, that's exciting. Um, where are we on the living roles? Well, there is a possibility for a role for you in Doctor Who. Now, the casting director loves you and does some really great stuff. Yes, yes, he does um, Call the Midwife, doesn't he? I can do, period. People are always saying to me, you know, James, James, you look like you're from another time. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. that's got to be perfect, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Though so I think we should slow down a bit though, you know, um, let's get you working with as many of these people as possible and then who knows, maybe we'll get you on Cora. Right, um, well, I know I can be impatient, so, um... The mention of a long-running Northern ITV soap opera alarms James. He takes the opportunity to air his grievances. Two hours later, and James emerges from his strategy meeting with a plan of attack for the future. Bye. It took a while, but I think we're on the same page. I mean, there are some really exciting acting projects on the horizon. So overall, you know, I'm really happy with the trajectory. Tra trajectory. Yes, no, exactly. I mean, you know, my charity work in particular is really, really important to me. It's so good to be giving something back. So I really just can't wait to get into these schools and, you know, speak to these kids next week. Get that message out there that, you know, we might be dead, but we're very much here to stay. I just need to make sure that the priority is me and my career, you know, uh, but I truly believe that nothing is impossible. I mean, even that very word, we pop an apostrophe and it actually spells I'm possible. So it's great. Yeah. The taxi's here. Oh. Well, um, we'll see you later. <laughs> Branner about the Hamlet production. Uh, okay. He hasn't cast anyone yet. Mm. Teen Radio Middlesex, um, mm -hmm. they asked about you being the face of the graveyard slot. I just thought I'd throw it out there. Okay. They well, might... I mean, is that the sort of thing I want to be doing? Well, there's a bit of radio presenting. Okay. Well, what do you feel? Well, I didn't like the use of the word graveyard, to be honest. No, it's... no, I'd agree with you. Okay, well... We'll no, I think we can that shelve that idea, yes, yeah. exactly. It's time to start focusing on the living. I mean, obviously I realise I'm, I am dead, but, um, you know... You can do wonders with modern makeup. Exactly. Yes.